Season 2 of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot DLC has finally begun, and we kick it off with Bardock. If you've played the Trunks DLC before, you can definitely expect something similar in terms of quality, size, and overall experience. Although to me, the Trunks DLC was a bit better. Still, I'd put this as the second best DLC so far, and there's a lot that it actually does better than Trunks, so we're gonna highlight it all and try to stay as spoiler-free as possible. So let's talk about it all, but first, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. I'm gonna share some very secret plans I have for this year during this ad read. It's about to get personal. You may know Skillshare for classes in photography, film, video editing and illustration. But did you know that Skillshare has hundreds of career focused classes too? I've been taking this class from Ali Abdal who's a doctor and a YouTuber with almost 4 million subscribers. He's also a writer and a podcaster. And I've been struggling to keep this YouTube channel active while exploring some other side hustles. For instance, I want to live stream more on the Globku live channel now that I've left Twitch. Finding the time to plan live streams and actually go live has been quite difficult. I want to launch my merch store, but not just a merch store where you stamp something on a t-shirt and ship it. I want something that anime fans like me would be proud to wear, would look at and say I want that in my wardrobe. And I want to start doing commentary for fighting games. I want to become a commentator. Join the big leagues, commentator major offline tournament, but there's no time to do everything. How does Ali do it? How can he be a doctor, have a successful YouTube channel, podcast and still find the time to write? That's what he teaches with his classes, productivity and time management, which is a skill you need in life no matter what you do. No goal is too small, obviously, I have very big ambitions and if you want to do it all at the same time, you're going to get overwhelmed and you're going to do nothing at all. You need to take the pressure off and start with something small and Skillshare is here to do just that. Their teachers will take you step by step. And you don't have to commit to Skillshare right away because they give you a free trial that lasts for a full month for the first thousand people that use my link down below. And a month is more than enough to take a couple of classes and figure out if you want to continue. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The Bardock DLC on its own costs 20 bucks. It's the same as the Trunks DLC. So if you were fine with that pricing, I think this one should be too. Personally, it feels a bit steep to me, and that's because they are encouraging you to buy the season pass for 40 bucks. If you're watching this in the future and you want to watch all of my DLC reviews so you can decide if the season pass is worth it, that's great, and that might be the way to go. But most of you are probably watching this before the next DLC is even out, so the season pass can be a bit of a gamble. That said, they did promise that the three DLC pieces that will come to season pass 2 will get the same treatment as the Trunks DLC. I can say this one, the Bardock DLC definitely did, and if all of them turn out as good as this, I'd say that's definitely a good deal. Now, why do I like the Bardock DLC? Why do I think it's worse than Trunks? But at the same time, how does it do things better? Well, for starters, I'd say it has the exact same level of production quality. You've got great voice acting, great music, great storytelling, just like the base game and the Trunks DLC have. For storytelling, you've got three levels of cutscenes. You've got the dialogue cutscenes, you've got the good cutscenes, and you've got the really good cutscenes. And CyberConnect 2 doesn't miss when it comes to cutscenes. You know you're in for a treat. But soon Soon after you start, it drops you into Planet Vegeta. Now this, to me, is the first actual new area that we got through a DLC. I know what you're thinking, Trunks had the destroyed West City. Yes, which was West City, but destroyed. A remixed area, for sure, but not brand new. What about the Beerus planet, you ask? The Beerus planet was so empty, it was such a poor excuse for a new zone. Planet Vegeta has buildings, NPCs walking around and doing stuff. You can walk inside a couple of these buildings. You can see space pods leaving the base, heading out on missions and surrounding this big Saiyan base, you've got a decently sized area with collectibles, vendors, fishing spots, it's a very complete zone. It has wild Sabamen that you run into as enemies. And of course, it also has side missions. Just like the main game, these are not voice acted, they have some goofier characters and storylines, they are fine. I think the side missions were quite painless and got a couple of chuckles out of me. Most of them reward you with brand new medals too. This DLC has a ton of new medals for your community board if you want to use them in the base game. Now during this section, I felt that that something was missing in the narrative. And this is the only time that I felt this. You're Bardock hanging around with your buddies and there are some Saiyan jerks out there like some bullies, but your group of people seem like a bunch of good guys. And I was really hoping to get into that dark side of the Saiyans. The genocidal race working under Frieza that cares about no one but themselves. And I didn't see that while we were in Vegeta. I saw Bardock being a bad father, but I didn't see any of these guys have any disregard for alien life. I thought they were being too scared of portraying Bardock as a really actual evil character. But then they left Planet Vegeta. And BAM! We got a brand new map, also with training grounds, collectibles, mining. That's right, you don't get one, you get two new maps. This one is not too big though, but even this one has a side mission on it. Finally, the narrative shows us how racist the Saiyans were. By the way, I don't love racists. I know it sounds like I'm fantasizing them. I just find it very interesting how Bardock goes from being an absolute terrible person to actually caring about his race and wanting to save everybody. I think that arc is interesting. But anyway, 
Anyway, this planet is where you're introduced to a new mechanic. The Saiyans are attacking this planet, the natives are going to defend themselves. Now, you can go around attacking those three towers on the map, which will weaken their defenses. You can see the level of their strength on the top left. Or you can just go straight into the main base and face a really tough challenge, which is what I did. 800 enemies in one go. It's a bit much, but it was a challenge that I brought upon myself, and I love that the game gives me the choice to do it. The problem with these big encounters, though, is that they're very good and effective when you're using them to break the pace of the game, to give you some variety because you're tired of fighting 1v1 and you just want to take a moment to feel powerful and take out a bunch of guys in one move. But when you gotta fight this long, it becomes a bit more mechanical and not as engaging as the combat usually is in Kakarot. Still, I brought this upon myself and I'm totally okay to grind through a challenge like this, especially if it was my choice. But this DLC does rely a little bit too much on these group encounters. You see, this isn't the only one you do, they keep coming and I wasn't a big fan of that. This being a DLC where you don't have that much time to play through the story, it's a short story, all things considered, which means you only have a handful of encounters to give the player, and when a lot of them are this, I don't think that's very fun. My total play time was 4 hours, and that includes doing all the side missions, but there are some post-game combat challenges if you want to level up Bardock and unlock all of his skills, and all of these combat challenges have the same enemies that you do in the story, which means yes, a lot of them are against these same groups of enemies. Again, I have nothing against this style of combat, but it needs to be done sporadically and not as the default encounter. That said, it has a ton of unique boss encounters. There's one that takes place on a brand new planet. They don't let you explore this planet, but they still made it just for the fighting arena. And freeze the first form for the first time ever as an enemy. We didn't get to see that in the base game. Wait until you see his crazy moveset. This was one of the best boss fights I've ever played in the entire game. But I'm gonna stop right there, because I think speaking much more about this DLC is gonna be tough without getting into spoilers. I do want to say though, before I leave, that this DLC might be a bit more than just Bardock. I don't want to spoil the surprise, but you might play as a new character that wasn't playable in Kakarot before. Now, I know that some of you are expecting something like Super Saiyan Bardock in this DLC, but I'll save you the disappointment and tell you straight away, that's not it. That's not the surprise. Super Saiyan Bardock is not a part of this DLC in any way. He's not playable. He's not in the narrative. You're going to get the original Bardock story and that's it. It has a few changes here and there to make it feel more like a video game. For instance, they gave him a transformation called Saiyan Spirit or something, but not Super Saiyan. And I know that for some of you, that's not going to be enough. So here's what I'll do. I won't tell you what the surprise is, but I will show you. So if you don't want spoilers, just close your eyes right now. Just listen to my voice. Keep your eyes closed. I will tell you when it's safe to open them. I'm going to show the character now. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? Not what you expected. Yeah, me neither. Okay, the character's gone. You can open them now. Do not buy the DLC just for the surprise. It is a very short story told after the Bardock DLC. It's like a post credit scene almost. It's like two fights and it's done. But it's a really cool perspective on the whole thing because it has some awesome cutscenes to go with it. I definitely recommend the Bardock DLC if it wasn't obvious enough. I do rank this below the Trunks DLC. I think that's number one for me. But this is a close second. So if you enjoy Trunks, I think you'll like this one too. And don't forget about today's offer with Skillshare. The first thousand people to click the link below will get a full month free trial. And speaking of ranking, we've just ranked all the legacy of Goku games. A lot of you seem to have missed this video, but it came out. Go watch the ranking and enjoy yourselves. Bye.